All right, video two about quadratics in standard form. I have a couple uh, application questions for you. So it says uh, the trajectory of the water from fountain A is represented by a function in standard form, while the trajectory of the water from fountain B is represented by a table of values. So again, typically trajectory is like how it's a parabolic motion. So you can see how this A is kind of going up and down like this fountain, so is B, up and down. And the question is, compare the vertex of each, which trajectory reaches a greater height in feet? So because these parabolas are opening down, remember that the vertex is going to be called the maximum, right? So when a parabola opens down, that vertex is called the maximum. And we want to know which one is greater. So which one has a bigger y value, a greater y value, okay? So let's use fountain A. Fountain A is in standard form. So we have AX squared plus BX plus C. So A is, now that's a negative 1. So A is negative 1, B is 2, and C is 8. So to find the vertex, first I need the axis of symmetry. X equals opposite of B over 2A. Your 2 is positive, the opposite of positive, 2 is negative 2, and then 2 times negative 1. Simplify the bottom. That's negative 2 over negative 2, which is positive 1. So our x value is going to be 1. So plug that in. So we have negative 1 squared, notice the parentheses, plus 2 times 1 plus 8. Type this into Desmos. Don't forget that minus sign. Minus 1 plus 2 plus 8, that's going to be 9. So fountain A, this is all fountain A, has a max height of 9. Okay, now let's look at fountain B. Now, if we look at fountain B, look at the symmetry, right? So notice the x are changing by 1. Notice 5, 5, 8, 8. If I quickly graph this just off the side here, and again, it's going to be not so great, okay? So we have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? Those are the negatives. So I'm going to go negative 2, say 5, and then negative 3, say 8, and then negative 4, say 10, and then back to negative, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, one sec. In my haste, you got to go to negative 2, right? So negative 2, 5, negative 3, 8, negative 4, 10, negative 5, 8, negative 6, 5, right? There's your parabolic shape, right? And because of the symmetry, you know that the axis of symmetry goes through the vertex. So we know that this point, negative 4, 10, that must be our vertex. So fountain B has a max height of 10, which means that fountain B has the bigger height, reaches the greater height, and that would be 10 feet, right? It's in feet. It says right here, in feet. So max height of 10 feet. Okay, so uh, one of the big pushes in the state test is using multiple forms to compare, right? So this is a uh, uh, an equation. That's a table of values. It could have given you a graph, right? Um, so there you go, all three forms. Okay, and last but not least here, uh, example four, I think it's two parts. It says Mia tossed the ball to her dog. Here's the function represents the path ball. Again, anytime you toss something up in the air, it has to come back down because of gravity, so you have a parabolic motion. What does the vertex form of the function tell you about the situation? Right? So when it's in vertex form, you can identify the vertex. So if I write this down, um, down here, f of x equals negative 0 0.5 times x minus 2 squared plus 8. This is a times x minus h squared plus k. Remember that your vertex is the h and the k. So in this case, my vertex is positive 2. Remember, you just take the, if it's a negative, you take out the positive number. And then your k is an 8, right? So this is what it tells you. It tells you that uh, after 2 feet from Mia, so when Mia throws it, after two feet, which is here, the ball is at a maximum height of eight feet. That is your vertex. So we're going to write a little sentence. So the ball reaches a max height of 
8 feet at a distance 2 feet from Mia. And there you go. That's what vertex form tells us. Right away, it tells us the vertex. Boom, in your face. Okay, so now, question, uh, part B says, what would the standard form of a function tell us? Well, we're going to take this function, and we're going to write it in standard form. Okay, this is going to take a little bit of steps, so watch. All right, so first thing is, we need to expand this x minus 2 squared. So let's see if we remember what x minus 2 squared is, right? So first off, you could do x minus 2 times x minus 2 and do the box method, right? Go for it right get your boxes or you can remember the binomial the square of the binomial rule right square the first term square the last term and then the middle term is minus 2 times the product times x times 2 right so you would have x squared you'll have plus 4 at the end and in the middle you're going to take x times 2 which is 2x and then multiply it by negative 2 double it which is 4x and it's negative because of that sign. That is what x minus 2 squared is. Okay. Now that is next to a negative 0.5. So if I continue, and I'm going to try to fit it right here, now we got to put this negative 0.5 and we have to distribute. So negative 0.5 times x squared is negative 0.5x squared. Negative 0.5 times negative 4 is positive 2x. A negative 0.5 times positive 4 is negative 2. And then we're going to, so maybe I'll put that, uh, so put that negative 5 there, distribute it, right, you get this. Sorry to, I'm just trying to give you different color steps. And then we need to remember about this 8, right, don't forget about the plus 8, right, so we're going to combine negative 2 plus 8, and you're going to get a function of f of x equals negative 0.5x squared uh, plus 2x uh, plus 6. And really, from standard form, without doing any work, the only thing that it really talks about is the C value. Remember that the C value is your y-intercept, right? So if you look on here, that is right here, 0, 6. And that is where her hand is. That is the height at which she threw the ball from. So that is what the standard form tells us. It tells us the initial height of the so Mia threw the ball from an initial height, or starting height, from an initial height of six feet. There you go. So in the next topic, topic nine, we're going to talk about, okay, so if this ball keeps coming down, right, how long is it in the air for? When does it reach the x-axis again? That's going to be what our factoring methods taught us, and that's going to be what we're going to do in topic 9. So a little preview, a little, uh, you know, a little, you know, not to, not to give too much away, but there you go. Just a little taste. Make sure you keep coming back to class. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.